शरद A very good evening, everybody. Welcome back. Thank you to all the regulars who have been giving us company. I also acknowledge certain friends who always make it a point to say good evening. The same people. All right. Uh, don't want to play favorites here. Therefore, not naming you. But uh, good evening to you. And uh, also, I am told that there are other regulars who watch this video because probably the six thirty p.m. time is not suiting them. But they are. watching this video at a later point of time whenever you see this video thank you so much for uh, participating and part thank you so much for supporting us that's indeed uh, the only thing that we require at this point of time is your support in terms of large numbers so on that note let's begin so yesterday we were discussing discussing about uh, supervised learning specifically about the ensemble techniques today we are going to take a slight detour and uh, we are going to be discussing about hypothesis testing and uh, i think we'll let's start with the very fundamentals and those fundamentals are why hypothesis testing at all uh, as far as supervised unsupervised learning is concerned we have a fair idea of all those things but why hypothesis testing uh, barney uh, today you are going to do all the lifting so could you please uh, elaborate on that yeah yeah absolutely nitin so hypothesis testing is one of the inferential statistics technique what what comes to our mind when we basically talk about inferential statistics that we have a population then you craft a sampling frame from that if need be then you apply some sampling technique and get the sample while you work on a sample you make statements about the entire population this is called as inferential statistics because you draw inferences from your sample but you make statements about your complete population hypothesis testing is also one of the inferential statistics technique wherein you always work on a sample and ultimately deduce inferences pertaining to your business problem which is usually going to be applied across <clears throat> your entire data set so yes hypothesis testing is not just used in uh, uh you know in inferential statistics by working on a sample and making statements about population but we also use hypothesis uh, testing for feature selection if you have a lot of features and uh, if you feel that you know what these are all trivial many features we want a vital few from those then you apply hypothesis testing and then look at what are the significant variables or features and then you tend to collect those and use those in the prediction model yeah all right thank you thank you so that is with reference to uh, so it is like i like barney has said it's a a statistical measure uh, as part of you know the the continuation to the preliminary studies of statistics where we use hypothesis testing <clears throat> for multiple applications all right now uh, how is this hypothesis testing how does it really work in the sense of uh, when you want to really start the testing process so what is the framework how do we go about it uh, could you please elaborate on uh, the steps to hypothesis testing yep absolutely absolutely so step 1 is to understand the business problem once you document the business problem the second step is obviously to collect the data right even before we collect the data what are the input variables and what are the output variables is something that we need to figure out up front and once you have the collection of uh, you know inputs and then output based on whether your output variable is continuous or discrete and based on whether your input variables are continuous or discrete 
or do you have output continuous and inputs discrete uh, <clears throat> and output discrete and input continuous or both discrete or both continuous depending on these you select one of the hypothesis test that you need to perform and once you decide upon the hypothesis test that you need to perform then uh, we select whether uh, the hypothesis test should be parametric hypothesis test or non-parametric hypothesis test. Once we define these, then we record uh, or we write down the null and alternate hypothesis. Whatever is the business problem, whatever is the statement that we have made, is that statement right or wrong? For this, you come up with some hypothesis and then you test that. Null hypothesis means it's status quo. You need not take any action. Your business problem, you can just forget about that. Alternate hypothesis means you should take an action, meaning based on the business problem, you would take some action on that. So once you document your null and alternate hypothesis, then you proceed further with your testing of those. In the due course, <clears throat> a few of the hypothesis tests expect you to do a prerequisite test, one or two prerequisite tests, such as are your data normally distributed? Are the variances equal? So first you, you know, uh, try to understand those aspects and then you connect all the tests needed to arrive at your final hypothesis test. So just to do a quick recap, you understand the business problem, you collect the data, you understand the data types. Based on the data types, you once again decide whether, uh, based on your data types and business problem, you decide whether you are going ahead with uh, parametric tests or non-parametric tests. And once you figure out what hypothesis test you need to perform, then you document null and alternate hypothesis by looking at the flow. Sometimes directly you apply <coughs> the final hypothesis test. Sometimes uh, you might have to do certain prerequisite tests. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That I think that was <clears throat> uh, pretty detailed. And uh, uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> honestly, I don't know where to now point out another question. You mentioned about uh, null and alternative. Uh, Nithin, you have to just allow me quick one minute because uh, I'm having this call. Just allow me one minute. Yeah, yeah, sure, 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 sure. Yeah. While you cover for me, I'll be back. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so um, the gist of the entire thing, what uh, Barney has just mentioned about the entire process flow of hypothesis testing, is uh, you know from the business uh, from the business problem or the objective till the various tests and the inferences. Once you you know complete the test, you use certain statistical methods. So the crux of the issue is choosing the right statistical method or the right hyper the right test now uh, the interviewer interviewee had mentioned about uh, you know choice of choice between parametric and non parametric so the next question that uh, i'll be you know asking is about what is parametric and what is non parametric and how you are able to choose amongst the parametric what there must be a list of tests so how do you decide that this belongs to that specific parametric test or this belongs to this business case belongs to that specific parametric test. If, <coughs> I think everybody is having a cough today. It belongs to that uh, is uh, is something that uh, I'll be, you know, asking that uh, next. And uh, and subsequently followed by, followed with that, the, the line of questioning that I'll be <coughs> asking about is <coughs> about the Accuracy or, uh, you know, the, the measure of uh, fit, how, how do you decide that uh, it is a good uh, fit or is it a good uh, measure? On what basis do you take a call that we should go ahead for taking an action or go ahead for not taking action? All right. The test says that you should take an action. So these are the next line of questions. So, Barney, if you could hear me, I would like you to uh, elaborate about uh, the choice of uh, uh, within parametric, what are all the tests? How do you decide, okay, this test for this particular thing? Or if it is non-parametric, firstly, how do you decide we should go for parametric and non-parametric? 
you mentioned uh, uh, at at a high level about uh, uh, you know continuous and discrete data could you just uh, yeah okay uh, so nitin basically we try to check whether a data are normally distributed or not and <clears throat> i'm looking at this as well so if the data are normally distributed then you proceed further with parametric tests and if your data are non normal that is when you proceed further with non parametric tests in most cases right and then uh, yep that, that's in short on how do we decide between uh, parametric tests versus non parametric tests and how do we know that the data is normal or not normal uh, is it uh, what are the methods for uh... those aspects and on what basis you say okay it is i i decide that this is normal i decide that it is not normal so can you elaborate on the test and subsequently the the metric on which you decide <clears throat> sure sure absolutely so um to check whether our data are normally distributed or not there are multiple ways out right one is you can just look at the skewness if the skewness value is close to 0 then you say that data are normally distributed second thing is you can do a histogram to figure out whether your data are normally distributed or not third thing is you can resort to even a box plot to determine whether your data are normally distributed or not you can also uh look at qq plot to determine whether the data are normally distributed or not quantile quantile plot all these are graphical ways of determining right uh, barring skewness rest all are graphical ways of determining whether the data are normally distributed or not however when it comes to hypothesis testing we have a lot of tests such as airy test anderson darling test and then we also have um, ks test kolmogorov smirnov test Yeah, it's not Smirnoff. I know you are coughing, but then. <laughs> so we have. One day uh, early. Sorry, <laughs> we are one day early for that. <laughs> so we have Kolmogorov Smirnoff test also, which will help us determine whether the data are normally distributed or not. So you first uh, define null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis. In null hypothesis, you say that data are normal. if data are normal you need not do any transformations on the data so there is no action that you take and then you also define alternate hypothesis a alternate a action right that's how alternate hypothesis can be remembered so if data are non normal then you try to do some transformations on that and try to see whether the data are becoming normal or not so you define null and alternate hypothesis null hypothesis says data are normal uh, alternate hypothesis says data are non normal and then you do the test if the probability of if the probability is very high that means that there is high probability that your data are normal hence if p value is greater than 0.05 you say p high null fly right so i can probably uh, write it down so that uh, it also starts making sense for our uh, students i'll share my screen just a moment so what is this uh, null fly i mean you may want to yeah yeah on that i will i will elaborate yeah. on that part. yeah so first we need to define the business problem second you get the data here itself you will understand what are the output variables and what are the input variables and you understand the data types fourth you define the flow of hypothesis tests 
based on this flow, you'll be able to figure out whether you have to proceed further with uh, parametric tests or non-parametric tests. And then you define null and alternate hypothesis. So null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis. For any test that we perform, we need to document <coughs> null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis. With respect to the normality, you see that data are normal. And alternate means data are non-normal. And then when you conduct the test, you will get the probability values. If these probability values, or if the probability value rather is high, that is, if it is greater than 5%, 0 0.05, you, we have an easy way to remember, and that is P high, null, fly. So if probability values are greater than 0 0.05 or greater than 5%, we say that null hypothesis is true. That means data are normal. If the probability is low or less than 0 0.05, that implies that your P low, then you say null go. Null go in the sense you reject null hypothesis. And here null fly means you actually accept null hypothesis. Here you reject null hypothesis. So whether you are going to take an action or not is decided based on null hypothesis. Obviously, if you reject null hypothesis, alternate hypothesis would obviously be selected. Yeah, Anit. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Bernie. So yeah, every time I ask you a question and you give a complete detailed answer that you put me in trouble that I don't know how to catch the next point, all right? So the answer is quite elaborate. And uh, moving on the side track for this, uh, this is another strategy that you could employ. Uh, in examination, yes, you must write to the point, but the objective of the interview is to tell the interviewer that you know the subject very well. Therefore, it is imperative that if you have finished and if you feel that the interviewer is not cutting you or not uh, no, interrupting you, you may want to explain it in complete detail. Now, I'll give you a case. I'll give you an example, again, not related to hypothesis testing. I had taken an interview with reference to, uh, I was asking the candidate uh, with reference to, can you explain to me what problems and bottlenecks you faced while doing the project? So I expected the answer to be, I faced problems with data, I placed problems with modeling, whatever. The participant has gone ahead and to explain the problem in detail, explained how he has overcome that particular problem and how that has helped in actually making the model really good. He has gone into a great detail where he covered from the problem to the solution, to the deployment, he covered everything, which made me you know, I lost all my ammunition because I could not ask him anything with reference to project. I had moved to a, another topic. So this strategy also is a very good strategy. If you are very clear, try to continue. Interviewers will definitely interrupt you if they don't want you. Don't mind about it. You can obviously stop there. All right. So com coming back to the topic of uh, the hypothesis testing itself, uh, we've heard something about the errors that are there uh, in that something about type one and type two errors. So, uh, Barney, could you please elaborate on that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, Nathan. 
So when we devise null and alternate hypothesis, there is high chance that you might go wrong. It's not, uh, you know, one second, let me share my screen. It's not that always we'll get it right, right? We might go wrong. So we have to also accommodate that. <coughs> Sorry. So we need to define what is the confidence level, which is represented using one minus alpha. Usually the industry accepted percentage is 95%. So they expect you to be right 95% of times. And then we also have significance level. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry about that. Which is alpha 5%. Now this alpha is also called as alpha error. If you have to be 95% right, then there's 5% of chance that you might go wrong. Okay. And this alpha error is also called as type one error. And <clears throat> we will also have something called as uh, one minus beta and beta value. Beta value is called as type two error. Beta error or type two error. And the beta value is usually chosen to be 90%. And one minus beta 90% is called as power of test. Okay. Or you can simply call it as power value. Now you think about this as a quadrant. Okay. Once you think about this as a quadrant, this is null hypothesis being true. And here you have alternate hypothesis being true. So, if you fail to reject null hypothesis, if you fail to reject null hypothesis, and I mean, when do you reject, when do you fail to reject null hypothesis? When null hypothesis is true, you will not reject, you will fail to reject. That's the right um, zone. This is the right quadrant. However, if your null hypothesis is true, but then if you reject null hypothesis, that's a mistake. This mistake is called as alpha error or type one error. <clears throat> For example, data are normal. If actually your data are normal, and if you're uh, saying that data are normal, that means you're not rejecting null hypothesis. Null hypothesis says data are normal. Then that's a right uh, uh, you know, analysis. That's a right result. However, your data are actually normal, but you're saying your data are non-normal. That's a mistake. Errors might occur. On similar lines, alternate hypothesis means data are non-normal. They're not normal. If they're not normal, and if you're rejecting null hypothesis, null is data normal, alternate is data non-normal. <clears throat> alternate hypothesis uh, says data are non-normal. And if you're rejecting null hypothesis, then this quadrant would be, uh, you know, triggered. What does that mean? That means that you go with your alternate hypothesis, which says data are non-normal. That's a right decision. 
However, <clears throat> if your data are non-normal, if you still say that data are normal, then that's a mistake. Your data are not normal, but you are concluding that your data are normal. That kind of an error is called as beta error. At any given point of time, one of these errors might occur, either alpha error or beta error. And usually the, the beta error will be higher, slightly higher than your alpha error. And I can probably give an example with uh, respect to um, someone facing a criminal trial, but probably I'll leave that to you, Nitin. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you can keep the screen sharing so that, uh, or, okay, no problem. <clears throat> Shall I share? No, no, it's okay. I'll, I'll uh, probably just, I've not connected my writing pad, but that's okay. I'll just quickly explain it. So <clears throat> the criminal example that I so uh, passionately talk about is, uh, you know, um, <clears throat> about the type 1, type 2 errors is uh, if there is a person who is uh, being, uh, um, you know, in the court, we are trying to identify whether or not the person has done a crime. And if we decide to uh, punish the person and we find that the proceedings or the evidences or the witnesses uh, are in favor or are, you know, prove that the person is uh, indeed a criminal and we punish him. And if our decision is correct, then it's not a problem, right? That is the right thing to have done. Likewise, if the decision or whatever proceedings of the entire case, the court proceedings, the decision comes that the person is innocent. And in fact, the person is really innocent. Then again, there is no problem. The problem comes when it is the Converse. Now, if a person in reality was a criminal, but because of lack of evidence, because of the ineffectiveness of the prosecution or excessive uh, efforts of the defense attorney, all those things put together, if a person who is known to be a criminal or, or, or we are very sure is a criminal, but is getting released because of various other reasons, is something that is incorrect. Now, the degree of Incorrectness, we'll come to in a moment. And the other scenario is if a person is actually innocent and uh, the defense attorney has done a shoddy job of it and uh, you know could not uh, really protect him and then eventually has made him to be punished. Now, an innocent person being punished is the extreme of the two errors. All right, the type one error, the extreme of the two errors. Whereas a criminal going scot-free is not so extreme the type 2 error. A criminal may be punished at a later point of time, but a person, if he is already punished, in the worst case, let us say he is hanged till death, then you cannot unhang a person. So that is why a lot of emphasis is done when you, you know, take a call with reference to deciding whether are we going by any chance into a type 1 error. We do a lot of efforts. The type 2 error is a little relaxed in that perspective. So that is the sum and substance of the type 1 and type 2 error and that uh, perspective there. So yeah, that is today's topic, hypothesis testing. Uh, please do watch our uh, YouTube channel. We have uh, a very beautiful uh, you know, um, session on hypothesis testing with a lot of interesting examples and anecdotes. And all the uh, parametric, non-parametric tests have been uh, taken up in that. So you may want to watch it and uh, <coughs> keep... Uh, Subscribing, keep uh, watching our videos. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Bye.